Okay, so typically, like some of the clients that work with me, you see them trying to do like their their mindset is still set on you know five years ago, six, uh, seven years ago, where they're trying to do like an eight or a nine percent preferred return, and you're just not finding that nowadays because of the prices. Yes. Okay, so you're bringing up another another problem here. That's and I've seen this happen. I saw this happen. Uh, okay, I've done over. I've worked on. I've closed over 50 syndicated transactions. And if we're talking about preferred returns on a syndicated transaction, the sponsor, uh, the syndicator, has to be really concerned about whether they can pay those preferred returns that people want today when there's so little money from operations coming in. Yeah. The only way they can do it is when the property sells down the road, probably. But yeah. the problem is that that means that the sponsor is not going to get any money during maybe the first four years even. They're, gonna, they're not going to be able to get any return on their investment or all their time on a syndicated transaction until the property sells, and that's pretty painful. Yeah. And the, the, the thing is, of work. Yeah. There's a red, that to me is when I look at a PPM and it's set up and structured that way, that's a red flag. I don't want my, my syndicator not getting paid. Because if something goes yeah. wrong with the property, he's going to be gone. Why should he stick around? There's not, he's not making any money yeah. on it. And that's, that's that is so I cannot tell you how accurate that is. And that's actually very intelligent, too, because uh, it's actually how, because it's so competitive today to raise, uh, you know, um, investors. Yeah. You know, um, that it's quite often returns are promised in today's market that, the only way they, they really cannot, they they really sometimes I have seen uh, syndicators have to actually borrow money uh, if, if it's not if the PPM is not is is done too liberally have to borrow money to actually make their commitments. You know, yeah. so you have to be you have to. Uh, it's not a yes. It's a pretty different. So that's one of the basic tenets right now. If you're going to be doing a syndication, is to be sure that. Uh, that you're going to be compensated, yeah. you know, and that, like you mentioned, because, you know, we're talking about, you know, syndicator, we're talking about hundreds and hundreds of hours of work yeah. over yeah. many, many years. Yep, yeah. five, to, five to seven to maybe 10 years. Yeah. You're not getting paid. Yeah. So and I'll tell you, Terry, I don't know, I, I, you pro might not see it so much in your business, but I see it all the time in mine. There's this new cottage industry popping up of, uh, syndicators like capital raisers for syndicators in other words Perfect. these people don't you know these have never done it these people have never done a deal before they just went to someone's boot camp and found out that hey i, I can get three percent of all the money that i raise because the sec back when i got started the sec would not allow this to happen now they've lightened the lightened the rules and and gave one big uh -huh. offer a free pass on it, and now everybody's jumping on this bandwagon. So you're seeing a lot of these people out there raising right. money. They don't know. They've never done a deal before. They're just looking for the big payday at the closing yeah. table, and that's yeah. it. Yeah, that, that, that's. Um, it's just so there are a lot of gurus out there teaching people how to become syndicators yeah. and how to. Because if you think about it, I mean, if you could actually use other people's money to that extent and make. Three percent, or maybe even more, uh, on the you know on you know on the property. It's like it's a great opportunity. It's it sounds that way, and actually, you know, I've seen people in the old days, you know, actually pull that off better than they can do it today. But it's not. Uh, it takes a lot of chutzpah, so to speak, to actually do that. And, I, and there, you know, I um, I have somebody who called us for financing not too long ago who's just starting out as a syndicator and they're in their early 20s and they think this is so cool that they could do this you know and i'm trying to you know it's like okay well let's see if you're gonna you're gonna have to actually fake it until you make it for yeah, quite yeah. a while if you're really good at that and you find if you find a dynamite property which is hard to do today you've got to yeah, find a yeah. really great property to be able to pull that off you know so Terry, you're so absolutely correct. I mean, I see it all the time and I think to myself, oh, kid, you know, where were you uh, 10, 15 years ago when I was getting my head beat in by uh, Fannie and Freddie and, uh, you know, my d dust lender? Um, there's a, one particular guru out there and people hear me say this all the time um, that I say, 
Uh, he must have he his his statement is you can always overpay for multifamily property because the prices just continue to go up. And I say to myself, that guy must be 10 years old because I can show him some of my old properties that never came back in value after the crash. And, and so don't tell me they don't, sure. they don't come up in value. Yeah, I'm just, 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 yeah, just as an example, I have, you, know, it, you know, it's not to say I've seen it go both ways. I've seen it where you know, people have made no money from operations because of overpaying. And then they have eventually sold the property at a profit. But during that time, if they didn't have the money to feed the properties that they overpaid for, they, they could lose everything. Yep. We saw this. You know, and so it's like, and then I've had, uh, I have a client in, uh, bought a property that she fell head over heels for in uh, Lincoln Park, uh, Chicago. It's a hipster neighborhood. And she decided to, this was about four years ago, to buy it at a five and a quarter cap. And it was old and run down. I said, don't do this. You said, you can't, you can't pay this much pro for the property and then put 700,000 into renovating all the units and all that. And she said, but my, my realtor insisted that, we, that I'm going to make a 20, I could raise rents 20% after I get the, you know, and all this, it didn't add up. But, you know, she made nothing from operations, hardly at all for about four years. And then now in today's market, yeah. and she, had deep, she had deep pockets. She was able to make it through. Yeah, but it wasn't yeah. fun for her to actually, you know, not make any money for four years. You know? oh, Terry, she looks like a genius now. She looks like a genius now because now the property, the rents have gone up. Yeah, or she can get them, and the property is doing the property is worth uh, a lot.